evening, everyone. So nice to see you. Welcome to Sacramento Central Seventh Day Adventist Church. We are very Amen. With that, I will pass the mic to our pastor, Mike Thompson, for prayer. Thank you, Rochelle. Personally as well, I want to give you all a very warm welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, so let's bow our heads. Gracious, kind, loving, heavenly Father, we come before you this evening with hearts overflowing with thankfulness and joy for all the things that you give us in life, but especially at this time of the year as we contemplate a gift that is so infinite we cannot comprehend it. And that gift, of course, was your only beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who became our Savior and still is. So tonight, may everything that we, that we sing, that we play, that we would read, that we... Um, would recite, may it all be to your glory and to the glory of Jesus. So fill this place, this house, which is called by your name, with your presence. Fill it with angels as well. And may you be glorified and may we be blessed. And we thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, the shepherds and wise men receive
Well, tonight we continue to celebrate Emmanuel. Amen? Amen. God with us, the desire of all ages, the cheapest among 10,000, the one altogether lovely, the everlasting light. In Matthew's gospel, we read of the generations with which that glorious light was garbed and that this holy and righteous child named Jesus would come and save his people from their sins. He would bear the sin, singular, of the world. He would not just become a man, but he would become the man, Emmanuel, God with us. God as us. He became we. Oh, this all may seem marvelous in your eyes, but when the Father has a plan, he only needs speak, and it is. In Luke, we read concerning the glad tidings of great joy for all the people, that the Savior would be born, that the power of the highest would rest upon him. It's there that Simeon picks up on this everlasting light metaphor, Luke 2, 28. After he had taken the baby Jesus up in his arms to dedicate him, he said, Now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the people a light to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Undoubtedly, though, John, the one who saw with new eyes, took the metaphor of light in reference to Jesus to a new level. After proclaiming Jesus as the self-existent, pre-existent, and co-existent word with the Father, he makes this powerful statement in verses 4 and 5. He says that in or through him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness in stark contrast to the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. At creation, God overcame darkness with light when he spoke, let there be light. God through Christ has overcome the darkness of death by bringing life to all. To every man has been given a measure of faith. And if he would cultivate that faith, the inner spiritual deathly darkness would be overcome. Light is stronger than darkness. The spirit is stronger than the flesh. And the devil is no match for God Almighty. Come on, say amen if that's good news tonight. And so tonight you can be assured that in your darkest hour, the light has already come. Although his people as a whole did not receive him, to all who do receive him and believe on his name comes the highest privilege in the universe. That soul transforming experience of becoming a child of God. What would keep you tonight, my friend, from accepting that privilege above all other privileges? For even now, of his fullness, we have all received, and grace for grace, even now, the light has come.
deepening darkness, a light shines. Here is the visible image of the invisible God. In him is life, and his life is the light of men. The one who existed before all things comes to us as a helpless child. Oh, word eternal, in you there is no darkness at all. Your light is shining from a stable in Bethlehem. The kingdom of God has come to us at last. There were shepherds out in the fields that night. They were keeping watch over their flocks. Suddenly, the sky split wide with light and a thousand stars seemed to fall into the darkness. Unto you is born this day a savior. Stars announcing a savior? No, not stars. Angels blazing their light into the sky. Who is Christ the Lord? The Christ? How can this be? This will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. A sign from God? Yes, from God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace. Peace to the people with whom he is pleased. And there... Between darkness and the light, they found him, the baby, the Christ, the Savior.
God is born on earth tonight. Hush, do not awaken him. His journey has been so long. See his mother, how she gazes at him. Uncommon child, so very common. A spark of light surrounds them. The flame pushing against the dark. So, this is how the light comes into the world. One child alone brings it. All of God's promises are kept in him. The child of light. See now this baby. A child so small. Jesus. 
Rejoice, rejoice greatly. Though we were once wrapped in darkness, the bright light of God's glory has risen on us. Shout and be glad. Welcome the Savior born for us this day. Worship Him with loud praises and singing. Joyfully rise with all the nations and adore Him, the everlasting light.
sveta noć. O sveta noć. Banal na gabi.
truly he taught us to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace chains shall he break for the slave is a brother and in his name all the oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Praise the Lord. Can we have the house lights on? And I would like to ask that the orchestra get in place. And everyone, I thank you for joining us this evening. You've been a blessing to us, and I pray we've been a blessing to you. I would like to ask Pastor Fred Dana to come join me as well. There he is. I want to let you all know there's refreshments after over in the Camellia Room. And also, there is a photo booth for you to take some pictures. Oh, come, come with me. <laughs> so we get all the choir members on the stage as well. This is the part of our program right after we have the prayer where we invite you to join us as we sing the Hallelujah Chorus. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. Number eight. Father in heaven, we want to praise you and thank you again because we wouldn't have anything to sing about if Jesus hadn't come down, if this plan of salvation hadn't happened, if there was no baby in a manger and there was no one on a cross, we wouldn't have any of these songs. And so we thank you that the praise that we shared tonight is a praise that we can share forever, for eternity. And that tonight was just a glimpse of what it'll be like when the whole host of angelic choir, when we can join them and sing praises in heaven. And so Lord, we just thank you for your wonderful gift, your unspeakable gift of your son, and we pray now that um, as we head toward refreshments, as we head home, that your angels will go with us and keep us safe. And now, Lord, let us just make one more joyful noise to the Lord. Pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.